Hello everybody and welcome to episode 2 of my tutorial series for Dyson Sphere Program. I'm Icon and this episode we're going to set up a smelting operation that's going to work out just fine and we're just going to start to produce our first research matrixes and unlock new technologies. That's what I have in store for today and let's get started. But before I'll do anything wild and new, I'm going to craft myself a new mining machine. We have access to iron and copper, but back there is also coal, and I really want that. So we're going to set up ourselves a couple of Tesla towers to transport the power, and we're also going to set up ourselves a couple of extra wind turbines, because we'll definitely need those. We're going to build ourselves some conveyor belts and some sorters. All these things that you are using in this game need to be pre-produced and crafted somewhere. Right now we're going to do this entirely in our mech pockets, but later on the road we're going to use machines for that. So, a nice trick to build stuff in this game is to just hold down left shift and left click something. So this way we're copying whatever's down below our cursor. Because it is quite cumbersome to just place down and uh, or, or search for all the stuff in your pockets, so I really like this trick. So I'm setting down a power pole right into the middle of this field. Now, shift left click the miner down there so I don't have to select it out of my out of my inventory. So shift R to rotate that beast. And we're going to slap it down where it catches as many nodes as possible. I think there's even one which allows eight. You really gotta fit it around a bit, but there's it's really just one pixel touching the, the utmost thing there. I leave that to you, but seriously, it is worth it to check out to get as many veins as possible. But I'll explain exactly why in a second. But for now, this thing here is producing coal for me. Why is coal cool? Because it is a better fuel than wood. So press C to open up the mecha panel and we're going to shift left click or control left click to pick these things into the into the fuel chamber. And if you compare coal to wood, you see wood has 1.5 megajoule per unit and coal has 2.7 megajoule per unit and no penalty on fuel chamber generation. So this stuff is outright superior. We're going to use that furthermore as fuel. You see here how many megajoule of fuel are stored in your chamber. Down here is the maximum capacity of our battery. Okay, we're ready. Let's start talking about smelting and let's do this in a way that we get the most out of ore. ore. So, every miner produces so and so much ore per second. There is always a maximum production and that's directly linked to the amount of nodes that a miner can cover. So that's why it's so important. As you see here, this mining machine here covers eight nodes. This mining machine here covers six nodes. As a rough rule of thumb, every node produces half a unit of ore per second. You can calculate that, it's easily said. Every mining machine produces 30 ore per minute per vein. If you break that down into a per second production, because I personally love to calculate in seconds per or units per second and not units per minute, but that's just me personally. Whatever, it's half an ore per second per node. So less gibberish, this thing produces three ore per second. So let's put down some conveyor belt. I'm going to yoink that over here, shift left click yet again. And we're going to slap that down like this. So this way we're going to get the ore out of the machine. And now we're just going to set up the the furnace, the, the arcs, the arc smelters. As you see here, it's actually also copying not only the machine, but also its recipe and the solder. It's just not being built up because there's no um, belt here on this side. We don't want to smelt iron plates, of course. We want to smelt copper ingots. So, let's check out the recipe. This machine creates one copper ingot per second out of one ore per second. That's a very easy equation to follow. So, we have three ore per second. 
that means we can build up three smelters, producing three ingots per second. Neat. So we're going to slap down some conveyor belt on the other side, and we're going to connect that with the sorters. First click the belt, connect to the machine, then click the machine, connect to the belt, and then it needs power. So we're going to put down some Teslas there. Just make sure that it'll cover the entire track down here. And now we can just shift left click and multiply that easily. Oh, we're out of smelter stone, so let's produce a couple. It's in the early game a pretty obnoxious thing that you're going to be handcrafting a lot, but we're going to make that stop as quick as possible. These smelters are basically already the first step into the right direction, because as you see here, we are now pre-producing those uh, circuit boards and uh, all those uh, thingamabobs, but we don't need to handcraft the, the ingots anymore. So that's a step forward. So shift left like that, and as you see here, we're now easily multiplying our production without needing to configure these things. But you see that uh, there's not enough power on the grid. Smelters do use a lot of power, or I should call them furnaces, I'm sorry. Just so used to other games. <laughs> yeah, but smelter, furnace, whatever. You get the idea. The place where you turn ore or into metal. <laughs> okay, so we're going to place these guys down. All the wind turbines we have built. Now we have, or now, enough power, but as you see here, we have still a very high consumption demand, so we're just going to produce ourselves a couple of extra wind turbines. Okay, nice. So we gotta do this for the, for the iron as well, don't we? So let's do this. First off, this Tesla is in a pretty bad spot because we want to continue there. So just like on the other side, we're going to add in a bit of belt on both sides. I want to have conveyor belt for the output of the iron plates. And I also want to have conveyor belt for the output of the magnets. Here up ahead is something interesting happening. The planet takes a little bit of a curve. Every planet in this game obviously is a round ball. As a rule of thumb, Try to avoid these narrow curves because they are a pain to deal with. If ever, try to build like that. Personal, personal opinion. Because it's way easier to connect machines to straight-lined belts compared to these slightly nudged ones. But it's up to you. I just wanted to mention that on, on the side here. So we connect these guys and let's check out the recipes. So. Iron ingots are the same like copper ingots. One ore, one ingot, easy. We produce here the same amount of iron ore like copper ore, but this stuff is being transformed into magnets as well. Sadly, I have seen no iron deposit in the vicinity around me. It's uh, a lot of stone around me, but no iron. So we'll have to work out with that. Since we know that we have three units of iron ore per second, we're going to do a little bit of a compromise and only set up two smelters for the production of iron ore. Oh, whoopsie, this guy's looking funky. And let's see, the last bit of iron, a bit of iron ore, we're going to share and divide now. And let's see how many magnets we're going to be able to produce. But this place still needs a Tesla tower. I'm going to set up the Tesla tower here because I know that there's not going to be anything after that. So... And we're out of sorters. Early on you're going to run out of everything every now and then. It's quite obnoxious, but we'll be getting there. Okay, so let's check out the magnet recipe. The magnets are a little bit more of a pain, so you transform one unit of ore into one magnet every 1.5 seconds. That means this recipe uses less than one ore per second. If you want to have it as an exact number, it's 0.66 ore if I'm not mistaken per second. So 
we have three per second available so you now either leave it like this and consume 2.66 or per second of the three or you just slap down a second one of these guys and use slightly more than this machine produces but you have no access i personally will dismantle this because i i think i want to have always some ore for the iron plates because out of experience i know that magnets are not that super important right now we need everything in stupendous amounts later down the road but right now that's okay pressing x and uh, propping off the unnecessary pieces of belt and let's go so now we have an automated production of magnets iron plates and copper plates uh, ingots ingots they're called so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to go crazy and and, uh, and produce myself some more conveyor belts because we're going to need a lot of connectivity next let's grab those iron plates because we've completely uh, consumed those and let's head on over to the whole research department so press T to go over to the tech tree so we have made our first steps over there and the next technologies we're going to unlock all need these electromagnetic matrices. We're going to produce electromagnetic matrices now to unlock new technologies. But before we do that, I want to go into this tree here. This is your mech upgrade tree. Everything here will improve the behavior of your little machine here. While this unlocks new options for buildings. That's the rough distinction between these two. So right now you see there's a lot of grayed out stuff and we can unlock the mecha core, which we're going to do because it only costs us some plate and we're going to get a little bit more maximum core energy. All these other things here are super nifty and useful. I want the universe exploration tech first. It'll only cost 10 cubes and it'll allow us to see the main distribution on the planet, which is extremely useful. So we're going to enqueue that, and we're going to grab a couple of extra cover plates because we actually seem to have run out of these. Okay, now, how do you do all these things? Easy. We're going to go into our inventory, and we happen to own one matrix lab. Let's place it down and have a look-see at it. matrix labs either produce science cubes or consume science cubes you have to de decide if you produce matrices or consume matrices with the lab or uh, with the laboratory so one matrix will be produced out of one of these magnetic coils and one of these chipboards since we are right now far far away from automating these things we're going to make a little bit of a workaround here. We're just going to produce 10 of these. Just going to produce another 10 of these. Let's repeat that. And we're going to use this first lab as a research place. But as you see here, we're not able to do anything right now until we have the electromagnetic matrices. So we can, of course, handcraft them, but we could and should also just set up another matrix lab. And we're going to do a little bit of a uh, nice thing there, just to get started before we do it properly. Okay, so we got that down now. So I'm going to change this now and set it up to production. And now I'm just going to slap in all the materials we produce right there. And now you notice it's starting to produce. I'm just doing this to show you that there are two ways to do science. And it's a little bit... It confused the hell out of me, okay? So we're going to slap down this matrix lab there. Okay, needs power. So now we're going to set this up on research now we can do this two ways either we produce those cubes there and pick them up and as you see here just like before the cubes in my inventory are being used for manual research 
But since that's quite an inefficient, inefficient way to do this, we're going to do a little bit of a logistics bridge there. So as you see, this place is producing the stuff, this place is needing the stuff. So what we're going to do, we're going to connect them, of course. Sorter. You know the drill. Click the machine, connect it to the belt. Click the belt, connect it to the machine. And now we have this place here consuming the cubes for us. So let's check out another tech. Now this is not really useful for us. Want something that's actually useful. Let's head on over here. Steel smelting. Yeah, why not? Or smelting purification. Yeah, let's go smelting purification. So this tech is really awesome. It offers us a better fuel. That's why I, why I want to go for it very at the, as the very first thing. And it'll require 100 electromagnetic matrixes. So what's happening now here is that, you see, we no longer have manual research happening, but now this place here is consuming these, cu these cubes just all, like I did it before manually. So basically, these things do the same thing as you do in your inventory, just automatically for you. The problem there is we don't have an automatic supply of circuit boards and magnetic coils here yet, so... How about changing that? I mean, as you see here, we have all the necessary materials there to get the ball rolling. So we need assembling machines to do this. Let's build ourselves two assembling machines because we need two different products. So let's check it out. We got to produce circuit boards. These are made out of iron ingots and copper ingots. And we have to produce magnetic coils, which are made out of magnets and copper ingots. The TLDR there is, both products need copper ingots. So we're going to pick up the copper ingots and transport them to where we want to produce that stuff. So shift click on that belt and we're going to do this like that. Sadly, we don't have too many belts available. So we got to be careful with our, with our consumption there. So I'll do it like that. And now we're going to do this like that. Well, here we're just going to skip the entire curve. Okay. So. As you see here, the placement is taking quite some time. This is because the drones that do the job are being fueled by my mech, and they can only get so and so, they can only do so and so much heavy lifting. So the larger scale your building projects are that you issue, uh, the slower they'll get done because your little dronesies have to have to work around that. Okay, so now I have got done this. Let's pick up an assembler and put him down here i'll put him down right next to the to the iron and the copper so okay. let's select the recipe and we see here circuit boards so two units of iron and one unit of copper are being transformed into two circuit boards over the course of one second that means we got to be careful here so Let's pick up the sorters yet again. And when you check out those sorters from belt to machine, you see this sorter manages to do 1.5 units or 1.5 trips per second. This thing transports one unit per trip. So every time it does one trip, it takes one plate and puts it into the machine. But we now know that we need two plates per second and not, one, uh, not only 1.5 plates. So we'll have to put this down like that. We need two of these bad boys to get the ball rolling. And now we're going to do this, and you'll see now for the first time that these babies here can actually stretch further. The further you stretch a sorter, the less efficient he'll grow. And you see here, this thing here now only picks up 0.75 units per trip anymore. And as you see here, we can't put this down like that. And here we are a little bit in a trouble, but 
We'll unlock very soon more powerful soldiers that can do the job better. And right now we are only sacrificing 25% of the total production of that machine here. So I'm okay with that. I think we can we can afford to lose that much of production there. We're going to do this better later. So we're going to slap these down now like there. I just want to show you a, a few things that you can do with the belts and the inserters or uh, the sorters. So keep making the same mistake. Right now, we are also missing the tools to optimize this place. We need to unlock new technologies to do it better. Right now, we don't have it. So, let's go on for the next thing we're going to need. I'm not going to copy this assembler this time. And we're going to set it up like that. And that's going to make us these guys there so as you see here the quota is exactly the other way around we need two magnets per second and only one unit of copper plate so this placement is actually not that good for us so let's press x and just place it down on this side because on this side we have better access to the magnets so let's make it yet again not that optimal but it's okay of course, if you want to make it 100% efficient, you can do it at this point already. I just uh, wanted to make this as a little bit of a presentation of what you can do and what you need to take care of. Because we're not done yet with the fancy stuff. So for this one, I want to output the stuff over here. But as you see here, we have now a collision with another object. So we'll have to... Put this on a bridge as you see here on the left on the right side of the screen you can lift one level or drop one level so i'll press the arrow key up and we're going to set it down like that i think it should work out and then we're going to press the arrow key down ah uh, yeah the uh, curvature of the planet is skimping us a little bit so as you see here But yeah, if I draw it further back, it'll work out like that, okay. So here you see a wonderful example of planetary curvature being a pain to deal with in this game. So we're going to resolve the issue like that. And as you see here, this way, we have put the belt above the other one. And this is not costing you anything extra in this game. You can do this. You can create the finest spaghetti of them all, and it's wonderful. So. Oh, we need new sorters, and I'm also going to blunder some of these circuit boards and these magnetic coils into my inventory for the time being, because, you know, this will speed up my crafting as well. So, connecting from the machine to the belt, and as you see here, since we are producing one of these uh, thingies per second, or actually two of these per second, we're going to need three of these guys, but it's not connecting well. In this scenario, you can do something like that. Oh, if you had enough conveyor belts. But I do admit at this point, if you think this is all a little bit fishy and a little bit overcomplicated, I did this to showcase a couple of nifty things that you can do with transport belts. If I wanted to do this optimized, I would have replaced the location of the labs to make it less inefficient. But anyway, let's pick up some belt and we're going to make it like that. I'm going to just connect these and I'll just slap down one extra there. And now we have all the output. Quite, quite an overkill, but you know, sometimes you have to do what you have to do. So now we're connecting this bad boy there. We're going to put down two sorters yet again, because this machine happens to produce two units per second as well. And now we'll just have to connect those con conveyors over to this side. And this one over to this side. And let's check out this recipe. As you see here, we produce one cube per three seconds. So. 
this machine consumes a third of these uh, of a of a uh, what are they called? Magnetic coil and and a circuit board. So one third of each. And right now, technically, we'd be producing two of these per second. So we are more than we are producing more than enough to keep this thing rolling the whole time. Now, let's slap on a solder here. And oh, you see these haven't connected correctly. Sometimes that just happens. You can also right-click these orders if you don't like them. Here, for example, I don't want to produce 10 of them at once. I just want to have... If you place down several singular jobs, get them done more quickly, because they're not crafting all the gear wheels at once. So, as you see here, we fixed it like that. And let's place down this bad boy there, and here we go. So, what's happening now is this machine is being provided automatically, with the stuff it needs. Nifty, isn't it? So, with the consumption of these cubes, it's a little bit more complicated to calculate these, and I'm not going to dive into this uh, topic today, because the calculation of how many science cubes you need per second is not really a easy one, and it would really uh, be too much for the time being today. As, a, as an easy rule of thumb, you can just uh, see it like that. If the cubes on your belt are not ending and there's always cubes on your belt, you have, you are producing more science than you can consume per second, and that's okay. But of course, I'll not leave it like at this point. But like I mentioned in the first episode, I don't want to dive into certain things too early on because I don't think it's good as an beginner's thing. So as you see here, we have now plastered this place with power, and now we got all these things rolling for us. So I want to produce one more of these, but I can't because I'm out of glass. As it happens, glass is made out of stone, and it's the last basic material that we haven't accessed yet. So I focused on to copper and iron early on, because I personally feel like it's so freaking important to have the first couple of science uh, cubes going on. I really can't emphasize it enough. So we have, by, by the way, researched this wonderful um, vein thingy here. And now you can press H and... Uh, let's see. Here, you can toggle, you can press H and then you toggle the vein distribution and then... You see it. Isn't it wonderful? I love to leave it on because it's just way easier to orient, uh, to find some orientation there. And another thing which is worth mentioning, in this game, you can stack things. So we're just stacking the labs on top of each other. And now you see I can, I was able to slap down three on top of each other but I wasn't able to put a fourth one on top of that, but that's only because I'm lacking the technology to do so. It's no problem to get this done. So now we are producing triple the amount, and we're still only con consuming 50% of the stuff that these two machines are producing for us, so I'm quite okay with that. Now, as you see here, this place is now overfilling, and we, this is mainly because we're not, we don't have enough uh, labs to consume that stuff. So let's change that right away. Because there's one thing, science is really important with this game. Because science is what gives you new fancy stuff to work with. And you shouldn't uh, procrastinate that at all. So that's why I really like to start out with that as the very first thing. You can set this up like I did there, or you can set it up more proficiently. But for me, I personally feel like I, I don't like to set up machines that produce machines for me before I have set up some basic form of science. So that's already spoiling you a little bit what we're going to work on in the next episode. In the next episode, I want to make sure that we're no longer using these 
handcrafting methods to get ourselves forward. I want to keep this thing here just as the basic science facility that it is and as a staging point for my further expansion. So in the next episode, we're going to check out where we want to build because with the new technology that we have unlocked, it's going to be way easier to find some good spot to work with. Because right now, these copper and iron veins, seriously, they aren't getting us that far because that's just very small deposits and we need way more than that. So, let's slap down these guys, and that's where we'll end it today. So now we have a pretty decent research, and now we can also start upgrading different things. I'm going to go for the universe exploration tech here in between. That's the same thing as before, just now, not only for this planet, but for all the other planets here. So pressing V gets you to this screen, and there you see all the planets that we got in this system. With the new technology that we are researching now, we're going to be able to see what's on these. All right, but more about that in the next episode. So next episode, like I said, we're going to set up a new outpost and start setting up what Factorio players call a mall, clearly said it's a place where you produce your colonial supplies so to say new machines new conveyor belts new sorters all the stuff you need to get the ball rolling and produce new facilities all right so leave me a comment down below if you found that helpful leave me a thumbs up if you have any questions ask away i'll be absolutely answering them and see what i can do and also consider subscribing if you enjoyed the content. I'll do daily videos and I'd be super happy to have you. So, have a wonderful day and see you soon. Bye-bye.